Hello, hello everybody. Welcome on in to Watch Me Wednesday. Today is hump day. Yes, and it is, we are getting over the peak of the week towards the downside. Um, and I am happy to be back with a great little tutorial for you. Thank you for joining in. I hope that you'll share this video now if you wouldn't mind so that um, I can show other quilters how to make this cute little block to make this cute little quilt behind me. And there's a little story behind it too. Hello everybody, welcome on in, welcome on in. It's a great day here in Arizona, just so you um, know. It's been, this is probably one of my favorite times of the year. I do, and I'm probably one of the odd people out. I do love the summertime because I like the warmth. But right now, it's like perfect temperatures. In the mornings, it's absolutely glorious weather. And then it's nice and warm in the afternoon. Not too, too hot, um, but it's great. So I'm enjoying the weather right now here in Arizona. I hope you are enjoying the weather where you're at. And I'd like to get started um, with the tutorial because I think it's pretty cool. And I, I think... For a lot of you, it might be rehashing some techniques that you know, but but you might learn something a little different here because I'm going to show you how to do it with two different types of rulers. The little quilt behind me is my Starburst quilt. Let me just put a picture. It's, it's a small quilt. It's not real big. Uh, let me just put a picture of it up here. So this is the quilt. Um, I'm going to put it right over my face. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is about 38 by 38, so it's a really nice uh, small quilt that you can make um, really, I mean, honestly, in a weekend, honestly. And it's a great baby quilt. It would be great in different colors. And in fact, the um, version that I'm working on today with you I am doing it in different colors. I'm doing it in my Blinded by Science fabric collection, which is uh, turquoises, uh, pinks, uh, purples. So it's gonna be a totally different look than the quilt behind me. Uh, I do have the link uh, for the pattern. The pattern is now available. This is what it looks like. It's now available on my website as a PDF download only at the moment. Doesn't mean it won't be as a booklet form. So when you get the PDF download, you just, I'm gonna show you here, you just print it off just like this. And um, all the instructions are in here. And I'll show you an overhead view of what it looks like uh, in a minute. But I want to go over um, basically what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna show you how to make half square triangle block and a quarter square triangle block because those are the basic components of this quilt behind me. You need to know how to make both because as you see behind, this way, that way. <laughs> Sorry, it's a mirror image in my screen when I'm looking. So this pinwheel block right here is basically it's a half square triangle block, okay? But the border blocks that you see, the border blocks there and the blocks um, for the larger star, like the edges of, those are quarter square triangles. So you're gonna basically be making two two types of blocks within this quilt. Goes together quickly. I do tell you the fabric requirements, obviously, um, so that you know how to um, create the color arrangement, even if you're not using the same colors. So let me switch to the overhead view for a second, because I want to point a few of those things out to you so that you understand what I'm saying. Okay, so I like I showed you in the last tutorial um, two Wednesdays ago. I always do a fabric key. Now my fabric key here are these are the fabrics that I'm using. Let me zoom in just a little bit on this one so that you can see. So these are the fabrics that I'm using. Okay, and on the pattern they correlate to the fabrics in the pattern. So fabric one. I put fabric one right here. So I know that this is my fabric one, fabric two here, etc. You could do a lot of this. You see it's from fat quarters and then a couple half yards. So it's really 
nice small quilt to do it with. This is the, the um, cover sheet for the quilt. And of course, as in all my patterns, you get color graphics for everything okay and i give you full cutting instructions and this is what i do by the way when i do cutting instructions i i tick off um where i've when i'm working on the pattern what i've done already i'm going to insert me here so you can see me um so i i tick off what i've done to create it and i do tell you how many of each to make what not to use what to use i give you the layout so you get all that in the pattern it's quite quite uh, detailed. So if you're interested in making this quilt, it, like I said, it's available as an instant PDF download on my site, which I have the, the link for you in the description of this video. So uh, Facebook, Facebook, I think it's either above or below, and I you know YouTube, the description's below. So look in the description for the link to the pattern so that you can create your own Starburst quilt. And again, it's 38 by 38. So it's a really nice small quilt to make in a weekend. Nice, nice baby quilt with a cute um, little arrangement. Okay, so now that I've said that, um, again, here are the fabrics that I'm gonna use. And we're gonna talk about, I'm just gonna go through the basic steps of how to create half square tri triangles and then create them into the quarter square triangles really super simple so let's go over that and i'm going to put that out of the way so i can bring these in and all your measurements that you need are in the pattern so i'm going to show you first what you're going to do is you're going to take because you have multiple fabrics in here and multiple um blocks that you're going to be making with different colors, you're going to want to make sure you refer to your fabric key as to which blocks you're pairing up with which background, okay? So that's super important. So you're going to take uh, your, your color block and pair it up with a background. Now there are two different backgrounds that you're going to be using in this quilt. One, which obviously you can see is my cream color, which is on the quilt behind me. So let me put the quilt picture back up so you can see real quick. So see how they, you've got the uh, cream color background. The other background, you're gonna say, well, where's the other background? The other background in the quilt that you're seeing on your screen is that fuchsia or maroon color in the border. That's part of the background as well as the cream. So it, it so you'll, you'll see what I mean as I get into creating the quarter square triangles when you're to use that as your background, okay? So let me get this off the screen so you can see what I'm gonna do. So I tell you in the pattern, the first thing you'll do is you'll mark, and I think I have it in the pattern as marking your, your background fabrics, but I decided here to not mark up the white and I decided to mark up my, it really doesn't matter, so it's a preference, and I just decided to mark up the colored square. So all you're going to do is, on the diagonal, you're going to create one, you're gonna, I use just a regular pen, and I mark it on the diagonal, and I marked all of my squares that I'm gonna be using, because I chain piece this whole thing. You'll see in a minute when I show you the piles that I have. Then, once you have all the squares that you need marked up, you're gonna pair it with your background fabric right sides together. So that means if you're using a print, you wanna make sure that the right side is facing the right side of the background fabric. Now, this, these are my batiks, my Blinded by Science, which I still have available on my site if you want them. Um, there really is no right or wrong side, so they are paired up. And then we chain piece, okay? So I'm gonna switch the view because I want you to see how I start my chain piecing. Now, I when I did started to do the prep for this tutorial, I chain pieced all my blocks all at one time. So you can do that or chain piece as many as you're comfortable with, okay? So let's head over to this camera view. And what I'm gonna do here is I have Again, you need your quarter inch foot on. So on my Viking, this is what the quarter inch foot looks like, okay? And then 
you want a nice new needle on, I hope, no, I'm not going to run out of it. Yay. I checked my bobbin thread beforehand, but you never know. Check your bobbin uh, thread. I use a 50 weight thread on uh, any piecing. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, go a quarter inch away from the line that you drew on either side of it. And we're going to chain piece it. Now I like to use, um, I like to use my needle, I couldn't get the words out, sorry, use my needle down position here because I think it works out really nicely for me because then I can just take it in and out. So you're just going to go ahead and you're going to sew down one side and this is where the chain piecing comes in. So you're going to see me coming down the one side and then you want to put your next piece in and then however many pieces you're doing you're going to continue to insert them and when you get to the end of your very last piece now here I'm only showing you two because that's all that's necessary at this point when you get to your last piece you're going to turn it around you don't even have to take it out which is great and then you're just going to come down the other side creating two stitch lines along the drawn line that you created there after you marked all your squares okay so now let me just turn my iron on real quick get it heated up for you and then we come to the end so here you know say you're doing i don't know however many like eight at a time so you come to the end and you're going to clip all of those blocks apart. I am a trimmer as you know. I trim my threads and I'm going to clip these apart. So now let's go back here to the main view. What I like to do when I've got them as so and I've got the stitches, um, actually let me show you the overhead view here so, so you can see how the stitches are on either side of the line. That's exactly how you want it. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit more for you. So you can see, see how those stitches are right, they're a quarter inch away. And precision is a good thing here. So if you can be precise, the more precise you are, the better results you're going to get or you're going to achieve. Okay, so now what I like to do is I like to set my seams so before I cut them apart. So I just take my hot iron and it's a hot dry iron and I just set it on top and that's ready to cut. And then I just set that on top and it's ready to cut. So now we're going to cut these apart. Okay, so that's super important. So now we're going to take our ruler and our rotary cutter and we are going to cut right on that line that you drew. Okay, easy peasy. So you'll get two triangles from each block that you've created. Then you're going to go ahead and we are going to press these again. And by the way, I will take questions at the end. So if you have questions, um, wait to the end, type them in the comments, and then I will answer your questions like I always do. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press these and I'm going to press it to one side and I want to press it to the dark side. Yes, we're going to the dark side today. So I'm just simply putting my iron down and pressing this open. I did, um, if, you, if you follow me on Instagram, um, my handle on Instagram is at quilter623. If you follow me there, I did a little reel yesterday and I showed you the process. It was sped up a lot, but I showed you exactly what I'm doing as far as the pressing is concerned and the chain piece and the chain stitching. Um, so you can see this happening in that reel that I did. Uh, and it, it's really kind of I mean, it's quick. It's like one minute long. That's all it is. So there's no talking. There's just a little music set to it, but it shows you the process. So when you're done, 
with that. This is what you get. You get these beautiful half square triangles. So from two blocks, you get four half square triangles. So that is what we have at the moment, four half square triangles. Then these particular ones are get, these are going to be my border blocks in my new quilt. So these are going to get paired up with this background fabric because this is going to create that border block. So let me pull up that picture again of the quilt so you can see. So I'm using a similar color that I did on the original quilt. So this turquoise or this teal is going to be the, in place of where the orange is in the border. And this is going to be in place of where that, um, it's almost the same color. It's like a fuchsia, it's a little more pink, but that's where this is gonna be. And the white is where the white is, obviously. So, so if you can envision that, that's how we're going to create this. So let me pull this off here. Then what you're gonna do with these blocks is you're gonna, again, they have to be right sides together. So if you are using prints, you want them to be right sides together. Again, we're using batiks here. So I'm just gonna set one up here and I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna put right sides together. And all I do is flip it here and I, you know, get them nice edges as even as I possibly can because they're all pre-cut. And then what we wanna do now is we still want to get another diagonal line on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my ruler down, grab my pen, oops, and I'm gonna go ahead and put my, oh, I thought I had a, oh, is it working? This pen is not working, but guess what? <laughs> guess what? It's like a sous chef. I have some already done, right? So you're going to chain piece, you're gonna, First, mark all the ones that you've done right sides together with that diagonal line, and then you're gonna chain piece again. So, let me show you. I've got two ready to go with them all marked right sides together. Okay, so remember, that's super important. You want those right sides together. Now, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna switch camera views, and we're gonna do the same thing again. We're going to stitch a quarter inch away from that line. With my needle down, my uh, 50 weight thread, new needle, and if you feel, if you don't feel comfortable not pinning, you can go ahead and pin these, but what I recommend that you do is pin them over here and over here, like far away from the line so that your, your stitching or your needle doesn't come into contact with them at all. So if you, if you don't feel comfortable not pinning, by all means, you're welcome to go ahead and do that. Just put your pins far enough away on the outside. Okay, so when you come to that, you're gonna then continue chain piecing. So however many that you started with, you're just gonna keep putting them through to the other side and sewing. And then we're gonna repeat the same thing. So now I'm at the end of my two. I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna come down the other side until I reach that last piece because that's super important. You wanna get them all. And then we're gonna go ahead and flip that. And I use my automatic scissors on my machine clip that, but then I also clip my threads because I just don't like the little, the little tails hanging there. So I clip the threads and then I go ahead and I clip these apart. Okay. So now I've got my two and then we want to do basically the same thing that I did before. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set these seams. I'm taking my iron and just putting it on top, setting the seams, gets it nice and flat. Okay. So that's important. Now, we need to cut these apart, okay? So we've got, as you can see, the, the stitch, stitch lines are on both sides of that line that um, I drew. And I'm gonna go ahead again and take my rotary cutter and my ruler, and I am gonna cut those in half. But now here, I wanna show you, there's difference. 
you get two different triangles. You can see how the background is on the right side on one, the left side on the other, and the same with the color. So you're gonna have two separate piles. That's super important, okay, that you keep them in separate piles. So I'm gonna just put them up there and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in half. So you keep, you have, must keep the piles separate at this point because it does matter when you're actually laying out your quilt. So I'm gonna keep my two separate piles. When I get to this point, the next thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna go ahead and press them again. So let me take you over here again. We are gonna press to the dark side on this. Now, if you're doing the uh, blocks that are actually in the middle of the quilt, you're gonna have quite a few that have um, white background and you will press to that you're going to press to the singular triangle so not to where there's two triangles you're going to press to the singular triangle that's important because there's just no seams there so it'll be easier to manage and it'll lay a lot flatter so i'm just going to take my iron i'm going to press it to that side and i'm keeping my pile separate again i'm keeping the right and the left if you will sides separate so this is one side okay and then my next side and i just press that nice and open and if you wanted to you could give it a little mary ellen's best press okay so now we basically have our quarter square triangles so let me flip you down again show you the the see how they're different they're not the same because the colors are on different spots but when we get to this point this is the point where we now need to trim down and I'm going to show you two different methods because I think it's important for you to see this this is where we're going to use two separate rulers because some of you may or may not have one or both of the rulers so I want to show you that so that you can see and understand how to do that. The two rulers that I'm going to show you, one is the Tucker Trimmer. So a lot of you know my friend Deb Tucker and she has fabulous, fabulous rulers. So I'm going to show you how to do it with hers. And I'm also going to show you how to do it with the Creative Grids Ruler. This is the Creative Grids Ruler that I like to do it with, this specific one, um, because it's got the right lines on it that you need. So if you're looking at this, it is, the, so if you're looking to find it, I don't sell these rulers. I don't sell either of them in my shop. Um, the Tucker Trimmer, you're going to want to look for You can go into probably Deb's uh, online shop and get it. But the Creative Grids Ruler is the, the um, stock number on that is, I don't know if you can see it or not, C, C, gr6 designed by rachel cross that's what you're going to need to know cgr6 so this is the ruler that i prefer if i'm not using the tucker trimmer there are other creative grid six and a half inch rulers but this is this is the one that i use they they're the proper amount of lines so okay let me show you how to trim it up and you're going to be trimming both sides okay so I'm going to show you one with the regular Creative Grids ruler. Now we're trimming this to a four and a half inch. And I show you, by the way, in the instructions how to uh, trim. So you'll see the ruler, or you'll see the angles on the ruler that you need. So as you'll note here, and let me use this pen for reference. I want this 45 degree line here. I want that right on that seam line for where between that white and the turquoise. But more so, what I want here is I want this two, it's a two and a quarter, or right here, two and a quarter inch mark right where this seam comes across and meets with this seam. 
So this is, this is a little two and a quarter inch mark. That's what I want right there. So my four and a half inch line is slightly in from the edge of the block because we're going to trim these to four and a half inches. And then I have a little bit overhanging that side for four and a half inches. So I'm going to trim the side, the right side, and the top. And then what I'm going to do is flip it around. So now this is pointing that direction. But I'm going to put my four and a half inch line and my four and a half inch line here on the edge edges that I just trimmed. And then this 45 degree line is still coming through laying right on that seam. Okay, so that's super important. Once you've done that, you've got it all matched up, then you can trim again, side and top. And I'll show you one more time with this, and there's your, there's your nice trimmed block. Doesn't that look good? Then I'll show you one more time with this ruler and then I'll show you uh, the Tucker trimmer. So I'm taking that diagonal line, setting it right on that seam allowance there and putting that two and a quarter inch mark right where those two seams intersect, okay? And then I'm cutting the top, I'm trimming the right side and the top, and then flipping it around so those even edges are now on the left and bottom. And I am lining up the four and a half inch mark and the four and a half inch line on the left side and the bottom. Then and making sure that that 45 degree line is sitting right on that seam, trimming my right side and my top and getting that perfect block. Okay, so there's your block. Now, if you have the Tucker trimmer, that's what I'm going to show you next. So here's the Tucker trimmer. Okay, similar method. You're going to take your block. And because we're trimming these to four and a half, I want my four and a half. Here we go. Okay, so she's got a four and a half inch mark, similar here. She's got four and a half and four and a half. She's got a line coming across this way, a 45 degree line and a 45 degree line coming across this way. So we're going to line up. So basically, we're lining up that point. So similar to what I was showing you on the other ruler. It's just that you don't have this convenient 45 degree line coming across here and showing you that intersection, which is super important. That is super important. So you're laying that 45 degree line here, that 45 degree line there, and the four and a half inch uh, straight lines are resting inside the block. You're going to trim the right side and the top, trim those away, and I keep getting a little fuzzy which I don't like those little fuzzies. And then I'm going to turn it around. And similar to what I did before, I'm taking my four and a half inch mark, my line there and the line at the bottom. But now this line, 45 degree line is still lining up there and I've still got my 45 degree line lining up there. So I know I'm in the right spot and I'm going to trim my right side and my top and I've got my perfect little block. Okay, so here's my perfect little block, right? Let me show you one more time. This one will be a little quicker. Laying that 45 degree line here, that 45 degree line here, because this is four and a half inch, four and a half inch. Trimming the right side, the top, turning it around, lining up the four and a half inch mark here, four and a half inch mark there, and making sure my 45 degree lines are coming across each way. And then going ahead and trimming my right side again and the top. Okay. So now I have two perfect left and right sides. So I have four of each. Now, 
I'm going to show you. So here's my pile that I, here's my piles that I have to trim. So I have lots of piles of rights and left sides. As you can see, they are the different sides. Um, so I have those to trim and I have a couple, actually I have eight with the other backgrounds. So I've been, I've been working really hard prepping for this. So this is what the other one will look like. These are those pinwheels. So the block, the border block, let me see if I can do it real quick here for you. So the border block is going to look something like this because you've got the opposite side this way. I'm going to zoom out so you can kind of see. Hang on a sec. Zoom. Uh, oh, I'm in the wrong. Hang on a second. Wrong one. Let me zoom out here so that you can see better. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the border block kind of ends up um, going back and forth, back and forth. That's why you need both sides. Okay, does that make sense? I think if if it's if I did it correctly, that's what it'll <laughs> look like. Um, so I'm going to ask if you guys have any questions. Actually, it's the other way around, but I'll I'll fix that when I lay it out on my my um design wall so anyway do you guys have any questions if you have any questions please answer them now or ask them now i should say um and then um i will let you guys be on your way but i'd love to see what kind of questions you might have let me scroll back here um Awesome, Sandy. I'm glad you'll be able to watch it later. That's true. If you haven't, if you just popped in, you can still watch this video on my YouTube channel or on my IGTV or on my Facebook page afterwards because they live there. So let's see. Um, she, oh, awesome. So Cindy, Cindy shared with her um, friend Kimberly. Oh, Kimberly's from Miami, Arizona. Awesome. Let's see. Kyra, what's your question? Do you have kits for this pattern? Great question. I can make kits. Um, it's, again, there are mostly, it's mostly fat quarters and a few half yards. Um, so if you wanted, let me just grab this again. And I'm just going to give you this overhead view. So these are the fabrics that I used. And I this this is the fabrics that I use for this, but I do have some of my Mandala Magic fabric as well that um, is in the in this version here. So this was my Mandala Magic. So if you are interested in this colorway, I still have some of that fabric as well, and that is those are the um, fabric colors that you will see. Let me grab that page again so you can see on the back of the pattern. And this, this actual, you can see this page of the pattern on my website. So if you wanted to just go ahead and purchase these fabrics from the website, you can do that. Um, the link for the pattern is in the description. When you click on that link for the pattern, there are smaller thumbnails on the side. Just click on the smaller thumbnails. UPS guy is here. Thank you. Um, just click on the smaller thumbnails and it'll make this page larger so you can see exactly what you need and the SKU numbers for those fabrics. So you can go ahead and purchase those if you want. So that is available to you if that's something you decide you want to make it in those same colors. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Kyra. All right. So are there any other questions? Let me just scroll back. Um, Betsy says she loves the starburst pattern. Thank you, Betsy. It's a nice, quick, small one to do. Um, Let's see. And I don't see any other questions. I, boy, I must have been very efficient in getting those, um, the tutorial right, I hope. Or I hope you at least learned something new today. Um, if you like the tutorial, please definitely share it. 
Check out the links in the uh, description because those were where you'll find everything. You'll find the link, I believe, to my YouTube channel too if you want to re-watch it again. Um, so it'll be there after I get done with the videos. Every uh, Watch Me Wednesday, I go ahead and I upload it to my YouTube channel. So it will be there soon-ish, uh, probably in about an hour, it'll be there. Um, and it's also uploaded to my IGTV. So if you want to follow it there, and watch it there. You're on Instagram. It's at quilter623 is my handle there. So you can watch it there. Um, anyway, um, I appreciate you all coming in. I hope you have a fabulous week ahead. I will be back in two weeks with another tutorial or something else. I am always open to ideas. If you have something that you would like to see me do or demonstrate or show you or talk about, Send me a message. Send me an email. You never know. I might just do it. So anyway, take care, everybody. Happy quilting. Have a great week. Bye-bye.